stock market corrections, crashes, bear markets. These are things that are basically built into market mechanics, especially when you have central planning and top-down intervention that make them worse. If you watch what the S&P 500 does over the years and over the decades, there are always going to be times when it's going up and there are always going to be times when it is crashing. But most investors get all worked up about this, get concerned, get worried and stressed, and ultimately make bad investing decisions because they're afraid afraid of these corrections, these bear markets, these crashes. Now you might think, well, obviously they're afraid because when the stock market crashes, most people lose money. And that's correct, most people do. Unfortunately, most people don't know, you don't have to. In this video, we're going to go over seven different ways that anybody who doesn't wanna be an active day trader can use in order to make money, to profit off of a stock market crash. We're gonna go in order of my least favorite all the way to my favorite, but all of these are valid. And if you don't know who I am, my name is Joe Brown. I run Heresy Financial University, where I teach active investors how to make more and lose less by understanding how markets work. If you're interested in learning more, link is in the description below. The first method is to keep on buying as things crash and keep on buying as things start to go back up again. This is a method known as dollar cost averaging. Here's a hypothetical table of what the share price of a stock does during a crash and a subsequent recovery, going from $5 down to $2, then back up to five. It would look very similar to what the S&P 500 did up until 2021, a crash and then a subsequent recovery. A normal investment would look like putting all your money in at the beginning, and then in subsequent months, you have nothing left over. And in the end, you have total invested of $500. Your average cost per share was $5 per share. And and your total shares purchased was 100 shares. This is a typical approach to investing. An alternative approach would be to split that money up and spread it out over the year, dollar cost average into the stock instead. With the share price doing the exact same thing, going from five down to two, up to four, then back up to five, splitting up that $500 to purchase $100 every month would still leave you investing the same $500. But because you were purchasing shares when they were cheaper, you ended up getting a lower cost per share on average, which resulted in being able to buy more shares with a total of 135 shares for the same total amount invested. This is in stark contrast to the person who starts to watch something fall and crash, gets scared, definitely doesn't buy, maybe even sells, probably sells at or near the bottom. And then on the subsequent recovery, they don't start buying again until it's past their original purchase price. And so this is a massive step forward for most people, for what most people do investing, to just ignore the noise, buy when you are fearful, and just stick to the plan when it's going down and when it's going back up. This will leave you in a much better position with more profits in the end, compared to what the normal investor does who is scared of crashes. But this isn't even close to the optimal path, and we're just getting started. The second approach is to go to cash first before the crash, and then buy it at the bottom. That would mean that sometime around the end of 2021, beginning of 2022, you would have sold your stocks if you were invested in the S&P 500, and then you would have purchased again in late 2022, just about a year later. And if you're expecting a market crash from here, then you'd be selling right around now and looking to buy back in after the crash has completed. Now, obviously this will leave you in a much better position than dollar cost averaging. The problem with this is timing is very difficult. Either you're going to be taking a top down approach, looking at it from a macroeconomic perspective and trying to time the market based on macroeconomic conditions, which if it were easy, then most people would be doing it already. And if most people were doing this, then that method would stop working. The second approach to timing the market would be using technical analysis and selling things when they get overbought, buying things when they get oversold, looking at support and resistance levels and trend lines, and looking at other technical indicators to plan your entries and your exit points. While this method is easier to learn, it is also very time consuming and most people have a full-time job. They can't be sitting there watching the markets all day. Charles Schwab ran a study that looked at the S&P 500 from 2001 through 2020 and they found that perfect timing did indeed beat all other methods of investing in the S&P 500. But as you'll notice, investing $2,000 every single year, perfect timing did not result in a massive difference 
price compared to dollar cost averaging. And that was the method we just discussed before. The worst method they found was staying in cash. So that's the person that continues to have more and more money to invest, but they're afraid the stock market's gonna crash. They watch the stock market crash. They say, hey, we were right. They never buy back in at the bottom. They watch it go back all the way up. And in the end, they're still left with just a pile of cash and they never invested because of fear. Obviously, you're gonna be in the worst place possible. Dollar cost averaging and investing immediately are gonna land you right in the middle with decent results. Investing immediately would be taking that full $2,000 that you have to invest, investing it on January 1st, and then riding the rest of the year out without making any purchases. The time frame in this study was from 2001 through 2020. And during that time frame, that investing method very barely beat out dollar cost averaging. And so you might be looking at this study and thinking, well, if I can learn how to time the markets, then that is going to yield me the best results. And that is indeed what this study did show during that time frame. But as you'll notice, bad timing left you with worse results than investing immediately or dollar cost averaging. Now, the percentage difference between bad timing and perfect timing in my opinion, are not large enough to discourage somebody from trying to learn how to accurately time the market. In your early years, you'll have more mistakes. And as long as you journal and learn, then over time, you will get better at it. But this is only number two on the list because again, most people are not gonna have the time or the dedication or the desire to sit in front of a computer and learn how to trade all day. Which brings us to the third method, which is just to outright short the market when it is crashing. And for clarification, because of the next ones we're gonna look at, this one one right here is being completely net short. This is not a hedge. So what is shorting? Let's say you've got some inside information on Apple and you realize every year around September, October, they come out with a new iPhone. And so you get a great idea and you text your buddy and you say, hey, I know you've got an old iPhone. Can I borrow it? And he says, Sure. So you borrow that iPhone 12 from him and then you take it and you go sell it on eBay for $350. Now all you have to do is wait because in two months, the new iPhone is gonna come out and all those used iPhone 12s are gonna be worth $250 instead of $350. Sure enough, Apple comes out with a new iPhone. You go buy an identical iPhone 12 to the one your buddy lent you for $250 and give it back to your buddy. He's okay with it because he didn't need the phone in the meantime, and he gets back the exact same phone that he had. And for this example, let's just assume it's in new condition. But you made $100. That example there was shorting an iPhone. First, you borrowed something you didn't have, then you sold it, then you bought it back, and then you delivered it back. People do this all day, every day with stocks. And this is how you profit on the price declining. If you were to take a look at, let's say, the astronomical valuation of Nvidia with a 225 price to earnings ratio, and you are anticipating that this stock would crash, what you could do is you could borrow these shares and then sell them at $469 per share. Then you get deposited into your account cash worth $469 per share of however many shares you borrowed and sold. Let's say you're right and this stock does crash down to let's say $200 per share. You then buy back the shares at 200 and now that you have those shares in your possession from purchasing them, you can deliver them back to whoever you borrowed them from in the first place. This would net you a nice $269 per share the difference between what you sold them at and what you bought them at. The risk would obviously be that if you are wrong about Nvidia and it goes to $800 per share, you don't owe cash back, you actually owe the shares back. So then you'd be on the hook for finding the cash to go buy the same number of shares at a much higher price now than what you sold them at. Theoretically, a stock can go up an unlimited amount since there's no cap to the upside. So shorting the stock market or shorting stocks presents a theoretically unlimited risk if the stocks go up. For this reason, I always recommend using very disciplined trading strategies for anybody who is shorting, because if it does start to move against you, you don't want to be on the hook for an unlimited loss. So if you can't watch it and be attentive, then at least use stops or stop limits. Now, because this is a little bit too advanced for most people, the next option on the list that I like a little bit better is using inverse ETFs. An inverse ETF is a type of fund that goes up when the stock market goes goes down or goes down when the stock market goes up. Essentially, it has inverse performance to whatever index it's following. ProShares short S&P 500 fund, symbol SH, has the inverse daily performance of the S&P 500. So when the S&P 500 drops 1% in one day, this 
on average rises 1% on that day. You'll notice some are leveraged. So SQQQ is a leveraged short NASDAQ fund. On the day of recording, this fund was down 4.8%, while the index that it tracks was up 1.65%. So again, it's opposite the performance of the index, but in the case of the leveraged funds, it's double or triple. One very, very important warning to anybody who is considering using something like this. These are for short-term trades only, not for long-term holding. This is the long-term chart of SH, the Pro Share Short S&P 500 fund. You can see it goes the exact wrong direction for a long-term holding. It goes from the top left to the bottom right. Not exactly the type of chart you wanna see on something you're holding long-term. Back in 2009, this thing at a split adjusted basis was $170 per share. And even worse, the leveraged fund that tracks the inverse of the NASDAQ back in 2010 was trading on a split adjusted basis of $452,000 per share versus the today share price of 20. So you might be thinking, number one, how in the world does anything keep on falling that fast and number two, Who's buying this? Well, number one, like I said, this is for short-term trades only, but how does it fall like this? Well, this is something called beta slippage. If you start off with $100 and you go down by 20% and up by 20%, do you think you're back at $100? No, you're at 96, because 100 minus 20% of 100 gets you down to 80, and then going up 20% from 80 is only adding 16. And it doesn't matter which order you do that in. Now imagine that percentage is even larger, so you start at 100, and you go down by 50%, you're down to 50. Then you go up by 50%, you're only going up to 75 now. And so for these funds that just track the inverse of the performance of an index, they have this slippage over time because every time the underlying index goes up and then down and then up and then down, this thing is just following it on a daily basis, which means over time, it'll start to underperform. And the leveraged ones are going to do that even more because losses are always more powerful than gains. That's why the number one rule of investing is don't risk large losses. So using inverse ETFs is something that is perfectly appropriate if you are managing your risk, you're paying attention, and this is for short term only, which means you always have a stop set. You are not going to hold on to this long term ever. If this thing falls below your pre-planned loss exit, you get out. You do not want to get stuck holding this thing long term. However, during a market crash, something like this can be very powerful. As you can see, this went from $400 all the way up to $800 per share. All right, now we're getting somewhere. Now we're getting better because the fifth way to make money during a stock market crash is to just buy puts by themselves. So let's say you're scared about the market. You're not sure. So you're all in cash. You're just going to use some to buy some puts. So directionally, you're still net short on the market, but instead of having the unlimited risk to the upside of just straight up shorting like we looked at, or looking at the beta slippage risk of inverse ETFs, buying puts are gonna be a leg up on that strategy. Let's say that hypothetically you're expecting a crash in the market and it to be concentrated in the NASDAQ. QQQ is an ETF that follows the NASDAQ. It's currently at $363 per share and you expect it to drop to $260 per share. Same level it was at last time it crashed. If you expect this crash to happen by the end of the year, and again, the same extent that it happened to last time, then you could hypothetically purchase the 300 strike price puts on QQQ that expire at the end of this year. As of the moment of this recording, these things cost $3.26. And so if you buy 10 of them, it would cost you $3,260. Just for some context on a $100,000 portfolio, this would represent 3% of your portfolio. And on a $300,000 portfolio, this would only be 1% of your portfolio for this trade. This would give you the right to sell QQQ shares at $300 per share. If it does crash to 260, then these contracts would be worth at least $40 per share because that's the difference between what you have the right to sell the shares at and what the shares are currently worth. $40 per share times 100 shares per contract times 10 contracts means that position is now worth $40,000 for you and it only costs you three grand to purchase it. Now, odds always are with trades like this that they're gonna expire worthless and you're gonna lose the money that you spent that you invested on that trade. But the risk to reward ratio here for a bet on a market collapse is better than all the other alternatives 
alternatives that we've looked at so far. Maximum you could lose is the three grand, which is limited and small. And the maximum you could gain, given the crash that you expect, is about an 11X payoff. And as good as that is, we're not done yet. By the way, guys, I'm doing a silver giveaway, hundreds of dollars worth of silver for the Silver Symposium in Vegas from September 29th through October 1st. First place prize is getting this 10 ounce silver round. It's an Australian kookaburra, beautiful 10 ounce piece here. Second place gets this 10 ounce bar, not as pretty, but it's still 10 ounces of silver. So hundreds of dollars here. Third place prize gets this one ounce silver round. It's plated with gold and it has this nice little Bitcoin design stamped into it. So pretty cool. So what do you have to do to get the prizes? Number one, you have to sign up for the event with the ticket link in the description below. Number two, you have to meet me in person. The first person who signed up with my link, who meets me there in Vegas, gets this first place prize. Second person to meet me gets the second place prize. Third person there to meet me gets the third place prize. So get your tickets in the link below. Just a couple of weeks left. Can't wait to see you there and give away these, uh, these silver prizes. The sixth way to make money during a stock market crash is called perfect hedging. Now there are many different ways to hedge perfectly, but essentially the net result is that your portfolio value doesn't change to the upside or to the downside. Downside. Obviously, one way to do this would be to go all in on cash. So you sell everything, liquidate it, go to cash, and then your portfolio value obviously doesn't change. But there are ways to achieve that delta neutral position without going to cash. Essentially, you have the main part of your portfolio that will make money if the market goes up, lose money if the market goes down. You will also have an offsetting position that will make money if the market goes down and will lose money if the market goes up. The size of both of these positions means that the gains and losses of each will offset each other and you'll have a net neutral position on the market. Now, obviously this eliminates all of your risk because no matter what the market does, you're not losing money. You're also not making money except for the income on the portfolio. And that's the main reason why I like this strategy so much is because if you have an income portfolio that has high dividend paying stocks or high dividend paying REITs or ETFs, this allows you to continue to receive the benefits of all that income and not have to worry about the price appreciation or depreciation. One way you can achieve this perfect hedging is through the use of puts like we just looked at. If you have 100 shares of SPY, you can buy one put that would give you the right to sell your shares of SPY at any time between now and expiration. Another offsetting position to your core holding could be one of those inverse ETFs that we looked at. Instead of using them to go net short, you use them to hedge your portfolio. Now, in case you're worried about the cost, if you are using puts to hedge your portfolio, you can also sell calls to produce income on your stocks and use that income to pay for the hedges. That way you get the protection without even having to worry about the cost. Now, the biggest weakness with this approach is obviously that you lose your upside potential. So if you're wrong about the direction of the market and the market keeps on just climbing upwards, you miss out on that. And by the way, if you can believe it, every single thing we've covered in this video is a very small part of just one of the courses of Heresy Financial University. Members get access to every single course, all giving you the tactics and strategies and the tools that you need in order to make more money while taking on less risk and sometimes making more money by taking on less risk. And so if the content in this video has been at all helpful for you, there is much more as a member of Heresy Financial University. Link is in the description below if you're interested. The final strategy to make money off of the stock market crash is tail hedging. Tail hedging is an approach where you say, I don't care if the stock market moves up a little or down a little. That's given, I understand that. I'm an investor, I know that's what happens. I'm not worried about that. But what I am worried about is a massive crash. Given stock market valuations, problems with debt markets around the globe, geopolitical issues, and many more, let's say you're concerned the S&P 500 may fall back down to its pre-2020 levels. That would mean we could easily see a crash to 3,000 from the current level of 4,400. That level of decline would be a little bit over a 30% drop in the stock market from current levels. Now for a $100,000 portfolio, that could be devastating and take years to climb back from bringing you down to 70 grand. Instead of just needing a 30% upwards move from there just to get back to even, no. You you need about a 45% gain just to get back up to even. And this is where tail hedging comes in, a hedge that is in place just to protect you from those crazy events that almost never happen. This leaves you with the ability to not affect your upside potential so that if the stock market keeps climbing, you can keep on making money. You didn't spend a ton on the protection, but if it does crash, you have a huge payoff. 
If you are concerned about the S&P 500 crashing as of the time of this recording, you could buy one put that expires at the end of the year at a $3,500 strike price on the S&P 500. Right now, that would cost you about $2,000 for one contract. If between now and then you are correct and the market does crash down to 3,000, then that contract now has an intrinsic value of $500 per share, the difference between the strike at 3,500 and the market price of 3,000. That would mean the contract price would be worth somewhere around $500 per contract, which would be $50,000. Remember, you spent $2,000 on this contract. And if you have a $100,000 portfolio, that means you're putting 2% of your money into a hedge for the rest of the year. Worst case scenario, you lose that $2,000 and your portfolio goes down by 2%. If you're right, the stock market crashes and this put then is worth 50 grand. Now, obviously you still had the investment in the S&P 500, which instead of being worth 100 grand is now worth 70 grand. So you lost the 30 grand on the stocks, but you made 50 grand on your hedge. This means that by the stock market crashing 30%, a tail hedging strategy would mean you go up 20%. And then you take those winnings, those proceeds, those gains, you buy those stocks again at dirt cheap levels, write everything back up and have way more shares at the bottom. This is kind of like term life insurance if you want to use an analogy where you pay a very small premium every month and in the very unlikely chance that you die during the term of your life insurance term, then the insurance company pays out a massive sum to your family. But in this case, your family can use that money to buy you a new life and let you start over again. And this is why tail hedging is my favorite strategy to be making money off of stock market crashes. And to be very clear, these types of moves that make tail hedges pay off are very rare. That's why they're called a tail hedge because you're hedging against a tail event. Tail as in, in unequal distributions when something happens at the end of a tail, just a very, very rare event, which means that most of the time you're gonna lose money on your tail hedges, but when they pay off, they pay off big. There's more where this came from, Heresy Financial University. Members already know what's up, linked in the description below. As always, thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.